Hello, I'm uh, Toshi. I'm a type designer from Monotype, and that guy with the Rubik's Cube. And yeah, today I'm going to talk about uh, my uh, brand new kerning tool that I've uh, done, uh, that I made uh, last year. And for the early uh, initiate typographer, I'm start by explaining what kerning is. Uh, kerning is a conditional spacing between certain letter combinations. Uh, at the top, you see uh, the uppercase H, A, V, uh, uh, laid out side by side uh, without any adjustment to the spaces, but sometimes, depending on combination, it might be too wide or too narrow, and individual adjustment of that space is called kerning. And that's not to be confused with tracking, which is an overall spacing, and spaces, spaces inserted uh, between every uh, glyph combination, so that affects the whole text, uh, then, then that's uh, not kerning. And kerning, the word uh, comes from a metal type, uh, the, this bit that's burning at the moment. I just wanted to use keynote effect. Uh, so this bit is called kern. Uh, in modern sense, this is uh, uh, not a conditional spacing, it's a uh, negative side bearing. And this is, of course, a handset type. And in machine setting, for example, Linotype, it was handed differently. Linotype didn't have uh, any kern, so if you look at the lowercase f, there is uh, no part of the f sticking out to the next letter. And if you wanted kerning, uh, Linotype had them already uh, pre-kerned as a single sort. So you see uh, down there uh, in, the, in the bottom half, you see logotypes. Uh, no other combinations was, uh, were available, so had a limited set of kerning. And in monotype, uh, it didn't have kerning in a modern sense, but it uh, allowed for uh, negative side bearing. So you see uh, this green bit is a side, uh, body, and this, there's a letter bit sticking out and uh, the back that supports it. And there's also a recess in this white bit that uh, allows for interlocking. Uh, so in the physical form, it looks kind of like this. This is uh, not the actual uh, shape, but it looks more or less like this, which uh, when you have an, uh, another letter, uh, allows for this interlocking like this. Uh, see? Like uh, but again, this is not kerning in a modern sense. Uh, yeah, but it's a great example. Uh, this one is a most monotype Zaxian vault. Uh, it's an awesome black letter typeface. And again, it has, uh, on the left hand side, has this excess line. Uh, what I like about this is that it actually has extra uh, piece of paper, a tracing paper that uh, monotype drawing office used to determine where the uh, safe. Uh, uh, this kind of line should go. So they drew every F, every FF, and every other letter on the left hand side uh, to determine this line. So it's uh, one of my favorite pieces of paper in the archive. Uh, in wood type, you see uh, uh, more like what we mean by kerning today. Uh, this was uh, done by uh, press, not uh, foundry. Would you say wood type? I don't know, but anyway. So you see that uh, A was cut, uh, uh, actually the letter form was damaged, which indicates it was done uh, by the uh, people at the press. And this was uh, not going to be used uh, against letters like I or H, maybe on the other side of the A and W. So this is, uh, these are dedicated for other diagonal letters now. And in le uh, calligraphy and lettering, you don't really have this mental picture of side bearings and conditional spacing. They're all just one space. But when you teach lettering, sometimes you see uh, letterings, for example, borrowing the idea from uh, metal type. Uh, for example, this is a uh, lettering manual from Ohio, whose design is apparently patented, like this. And what is interesting is that in this diagram, you see that uh, there's a kerning instruction uh, this one was on eBay, but it was too expensive, so I didn't buy it. I'm sorry for the buyer. Um, so in digital, uh, things are a bit rough. You only have this square side bearings or body, and you just insert a text cursor and just enter the value. So that's the same across the board in any type design tools. So you see like this, and yeah, just enter the cursor, adjust the value, uh, listen to Johnny Be Good. Kerning Johnny V while listening to Johnny V. Sorry for reusing the type on joke. And my uh, preferred method is this, because not many people enjoy kerning, like, uh, but I'm one of the minority, and I do enjoy kerning with keyboard. I do uh, enjoy much more with gaming controller. 
And uh, it lets me stay away from the screen, which is really nice. And also, it feels like I'm playing a game. Yeah. Uh, this, is, this is a control scheme. I do have a controller with me, so if you're interested, I can do a demonstration. But uh, I can do everything uh, regarding kerning uh, from uh, in, uh, inside glyphs. So yeah, I like it. So I normally I use either Xbox kerning or bubble kerning. I, uh, keyboard is the least favorite method. And in uh, graphical kerning uh, in digital, uh, there's not many examples. Uh, for example, this one is, I think, perhaps the most, most recent one. It's a uh, Cambria Math. It's a math mathematical typesetting for Microsoft's uh, Office uh, applications. Uh, because in mathematical typesetting, there are lots of glyphs, and they all shift up and down and will be scaled. So it's really difficult to predict uh, kerns, uh, kerning. So there should be more dynamic and agnostic weight. Uh, so this is what they came up with. So you have this uh, zigzag line of uh, variable uh, side bearings. So if you uh, move uh, superscript capital A a bit uh, further up, then it will be current against L, something like that. And perhaps the oldest example of digital uh, graphical kerning is this. This is a German typesetting system called Columnus, and its font format, Columnus font editor, and uh, yeah, it had its own uh, font format, and it was, uh, uh, for Atari ST. Uh, what is interesting is that they had this uh, uh, graphical uh, kerning system which separates, uh, M, uh, how can I say, font size into like eight different bands. So each bandwidth, uh, bandwidth is uh, 125 units in uh, 1000 UPM. And you might think this is a really ancient piece of history, but no, you can still purchase it. Uh, it's 79 euros. Uh, you can install it to your whatever favorite Atari emulator. And yeah, the manual was uh, last edited as recently as uh, 2007. Considering the, uh, how old the Atari ST is, it's amazingly recent. So this is what I wanted to do. Uh, although I didn't borrow the idea, I just found out about this after inventing bubble current. So that brings me to bubble current. Uh, don't take a picture. <laughs> Uh, so in bubble current, this is a, a set of uh, plugins and scripts that I made for uh, glyphs, the font editor I use. So in bubble current, you draw this extra layer, uh, this purple layer called bubble. And bubble current converts uh, internally to this, uh, uh, again, similar idea of bands at uh, every 20 units. So 1,000 UPM will be separated into uh, 50 bands. So it's essentially, it's a difference uh, from the side bearings. And when there's a next letter next to it, uh, it tries to calculate a minimum distance uh, that they collide. For example, it's here around the crossbar of the F and uh, enters that as a kerning value. And I would like to show you a demo. Oh, uh, not this side, oops. Oh, wait, oh yeah. So I have uh, Noto Sans here, or uh, capitals. And first of all, I yes, uh, draw a bubble for the F, uh, sorry, U. I copy the layer and call it bubble. And delete the inside because it's not necessary. Uh, okay, I pre-calculated this already. Uh, plus, okay, plus one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it's a bit too much. So it's uh, like that, for example. And there's a plugin that I wrote to visualize this. So it's gonna look like that for the U. And it's a bit time consuming to do every, uh, every single glyph. So I wrote, also wrote a script that uh, copies the layer and offsets the letter forms to uh, create a bubble instantly. Uh, okay, click. Then you see bubbles like that. Uh, there's a reason why uh, I trimmed the side bearings, but uh, I trim at side bearings. I'm going to explain it later. But uh, yeah, let's move on to kerning, just using this bubble. Okay, bubble kern. Uh, in this bubble kern, you need to specify a checklist. So what it, what it doesn't do is to check every glyph against every other glyph. That's going to be hugely uh, time consuming. So you need to s tell bubble kern to check certain uh, sets of pairs. For example, I pasted A to Z against A to Z, so it's gonna look at this 
uh, A to A from Z to Z, so which is about, yeah, 26.26, if I current more pairs. Uh, was it current? Oh, okay, I can't see, really see it. Uh, okay, now it's current. Uh, you see the T and A, uh, yeah, current by 133. And I think the VA and WA, are bit, they're a bit much. So I'm gonna just uh, bubble layer a bit. Uh, and what I noticed in uh, this bubble current is that as the letter uh, details get uh, move, uh, how can I say, go inside bubble, uh, sorry, side bearings, uh, bubbles don't need to go as, uh, uh, it doesn't need to go parallel to these details. It needs to be more generous like that. And maybe V as well. And just a quick uh, adjustment so it's not gonna be beautiful. And these are unnecessary. Uh, did I, okay. Just to check. Okay, so I will rerun the scripts. So, oh, I forgot to save it. Um, can I, okay. So when you update a bubble, you only need to uh, update a kerning around this uh, uh, particular uh, letter, so you'll choose this one. So it doesn't recon everything. It only can specific part of kerning data. So click, and yeah, A as well. Yeah, of course you can select multiple glyphs. So now the kerning, uh, it's a bit loosened. And that's how you do, uh, you draw a bubble, uh, update kerning, and redraw bubble, update kerning, uh, rinse and repeat. And I already made these uh, as well. Uh, just to show you that components actually inherit uh, bubbles, so you don't need to redraw uh, bubbles for the components. And for this, yeah, okay. Uh, why did I close this? Um, just paste and paste. And for the these are critical ones, uh, I will, okay, just copy these. Uh, comma separated, oh, space separated. So, and add, on the left-hand side, I only need F, and this on side, diacritical ones. So, if I click add flipped, of course, it's going to add, uh, wait. oh yeah, the, the other side, but um, I, it's not necessary, so I just remove them. So, uh, for F, I click like that, so they're current automatically like this. So that's the bubble current in a nutshell. And go back, going back to the slide. So there's some things uh, uh, with bubble current. For example, when you have uh, bubbles that technically go through each other and kerning values could be infinite like that, uh, there's a limit that I have uh, uh, put, built in. It's uh, half of the narrow glyph of a pair. The reason is, for example, when you have T period T, and if you normally uh, overcome T period and period T, you might have arms of T at the top touching each other. Uh, you want to avoid that. So if you want to avoid it automatically, uh, basically you shouldn't turn more than half width of the narrow glyph, or in this case period. So I think it's a sensible limit. So that's what happens when you have this uh, bubbles going through. And also you need to watch out for uh, uh, two things. Uh, I'm gonna explain the, these in next slides. Uh, but, uh, you need to be careful with the bubble shapes and also you might not be, inter uh, you might not be able to the, uh, make a kerning data entirely with bubbles. Uh, first of all, you have this self uh, H, which has bubbles sticking out from the side bearings. Uh, this is really bad because when you have another H, that's going to be kerned. And if you have ker H kerning, uh, being kerned against everything, so that, that's a, uh, bad idea. So the solution is to stick to uh, side bearings like this, or in other words, just uh, have some way to create, uh, avoid uh, unnecessary kerning. Yeah, because we're still uh, at the end generating uh, kerning data, so we're still using uh, side bearings. And the second is, okay, you might be happy with this W uh, touching each other with uh, touching another W, but uh, you might want to have kern this combination positively you can't do this with bubbles. And, well, maybe you can with uh, more creative bubble shapes, but uh, there's, there will be a point that you, you will have to adjust uh, uh, kerning manually. So in the current process, I draw bubble, uh, update bubble, and 
keep repeating until there is a point where I can no longer update, uh, uh, improve the kerning with bubbles. And then I start uh, kerning manually, uh, adjusting manually. Uh, and this is a point of no return. Once I start doing this, bubbles will be useless. So in the future updates, I am planning to just save them, uh, save them especially the right-hand side, separately. I think there's a way to do it in glyphs uh, so that the bubble can remember what you have done as opposed to what bubble has done so, it, so that it keeps the change of the user. And in my experience, you, you can uh, kern like 70 to 90% of the kerning data by bub with bubbles and the rest uh, manually. And there's also a typeface by Borna, uh, my fellow Reading graduate, and he made a typeface, uh, again, um, for the majority of kerning uh, with bubbles and uh, the rest by hand. And this also is confirmed by John Hudson. He said when he made uh, Cambria Math, he said that it was really difficult to create a bubble that works for every case. So I, th I think uh, there needs, needs to be some uh, uh, bubble and manual kerning. And bubble kerning at the moment, uh, bubble kern this at the moment only can generate uh, kerning, and in theory, uh, mathematical uh, bubble uh, as well from uh, uh, Microsoft system. And bubble kern, uh, bubbles are not yeah, useful more than that, but I, I think it, there's a potential, so I do have a proposal. And basically, put bubbles in uh, open type feature, uh, open type, maybe in the next yeah, 8.1.8. 8. Uh, sorry. 1.8.1, yeah. And what I'm adding, maybe vertical bubble. Yeah. So in my idea, you first, uh, the layout engine first uh, spaces uh, letter formed using bubbles. Then when there is a current feature specified by the user, that's gonna be, uh, that's gonna overwrite uh, bubbles. So it will, it will be a two-step uh, kerning. And there's lots of uh, pros. Uh, first of all, uh, you, as a designer, you might uh, overlook some uh, kerning pairs, and bubbles automatically takes care of you, uh, takes care of it. And also, bubble, bubbles can be scaled and positioned as well, which means uh, you can kern again uh, between different typographic settings, like uh, different size, different position, and different fonts. So you can kern between Roman and italic, for example. And you can also kern uh, more than pairs, which I'm getting to in the next slide and it's more fun. And if it turns out to not work, we can still go back to the uh, uh, clunky old uh, kerning of uh, square side bearings and uh, type in the value. And the pro uh, cons is maybe the file size get uh, uh, larger, although in exchange, current feature will be reduced. So I don't know how much it will increase. Also computation wise, it might become more uh, intensive, but I don't think that's not, uh, very much. So, okay, going back to the third, uh, uh, third point, I, uh, the classical example might be this Nastarik. Uh, so you have two Urdu words uh, whose outstrokes are colliding at the bottom, and it's really difficult to predict this kind of collision uh, with kerning. So uh, the reason is uh, the collision, uh, the, sorry, the combinations that uh, uh, causing the, this collision is actually like five glyphs apart. So, uh, but when you have bubbles, uh, you can turn like this. But it does raise a question of how you allow for this bu bubble collision, for example, in the medium, uh, uh, initial, medium, final form. So it might be sensible to merge bubbles after forming a word, like uh, maybe referring to positional forms, uh, positional shapes. Um, I'm not saying this should be. Uh, this is how Nastadik should be handled. It's just an idea. And as a as a conclusion, I have a thought on uh, automatic. Uh, type design tools. I, I realized there are lots of uh, presentations after this. So I, I do, yeah, I don't hate them. I just think that there are very important things missing in almost all uh, tools. Uh, the thing is, I think they're all uh, developed by uh, non-specialists who start designing type and think, man, type, type design should be much easier because there are lots of repeating features. And I, yeah, I think I agree. But uh, the thing is, they miss one very important thing, which is uh, spacing. Uh, for example, this uh, screenshot of uh, project spaces, there is no uh, slider for spacing, whereas there are many, many more uh, sliders for serifs and effects and everything. I think, I don't, again, I don't hate uh, automatic type design tools, but I think the reason why 
I think they're going to fail is that there's no uh, limited or no spacing control. So even in the most dedicated of type design tools, I think uh, spacing tool sets are rather limited. You, we still have the square and yeah, exceptional uh, uh, values as kerning. And I think it's a shame. I think that we should invest more in spacing. So that's the end of this presentation. So this has been Toshi saying, give space more love. Thank you very much. Thanks. Um, we have time for one question. Anyone has a question? OK. Do you want to shout it out? I don't want to run all the way back there. So you have an intent of bubbles to interpolate? Yeah, I believe it's possible. So yeah, it's uh, friendly to font variation. Yeah. OK, great. Thank you. So as uh, next speakers here, is Frederick here?